All right, so we covered residential land and the kind of what we expect the price spread and the characteristics of that residential land to look like. Let's move with uh, farmland. So the way we're gonna view farmland is it puts a kind of barrier on how far the city can go out. So remember, you know, we said that the price of land is gonna get cheaper as you move away from the city center. Okay, as those community costs gets higher and higher and higher, you know, as you move away from the city center, the price of land will go down and down and down. All right, and you see this roughly in LA, you know, you land is cheaper in out in Riverside than it is in LA. As you go that way, um, land gets cheaper and cheaper. Now, at some point, if I own land, it's going to be, you know, I'm going to get a higher return on that land if I turn it into agriculture, use it for farming than if I turn it into houses. And so, I mean, this is a little different in LA because it's a desert. Um, but, uh, you know, many cities, as you go further out, you can you could do farming. So at some point, I'm going to say, you know what, instead of turning this into houses, I'm going to turn it into farms where I can make more money. So kind of that that ability to farm puts a limit on how far the, the city can go. So basically, what we're going to say is the city's population is going to be centered around the central business district. As I move out, you know, I'm going to have less people live there because there's going to be less dense housing. But at some point, the city is going to end because this will be farmland. So this kind of gives us a rough shape of what our cities are going to look like. And if you look at a monocentric city, a city based around central business district, this is what it looks like. As a real dense center, it gets less dense. And at some point, the city stops. I mean, you can literally see it from space, you know, as, as that, that where the limits of a, a city are. Okay, now let's think about manufacturing. So manufacturing is very interesting in that it really changes over time. It's really determined by, by a few things. One is the, you know, how tolerable people are of population or of, of pollution. Initially, people are like, what well, pollution or whatever, you know. Um, now, obviously, people are very sensitive to pollution, don't want uh, pollution anywhere near, it, near them. Also, transportation. Transportation has changed a lot. You know, way back in the day, 200 years ago, it was water. And now, obviously, we have all different types of uh, transportation. And so when manufacturing first gets going, you would want to put your manufacturing sector like right next to where the easy transportation is, which is on the water, which is when you go to East Coast cities, many of them are have like redone their waterfronts, but their original waterfront was just factories right on the waterfront. This is the case of New York, Baltimore. Um, that's all being uh, being redone. I mean, even in LA, to, to some extent, if you go down to the Long Beach Harbor, there's like a very big industrial sector right next to, uh, to the harbor. Okay, all right. And so basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna a very simple model of the manufacturing sector. Um, and we're gonna say, look, the manufacturing sector has a bunch of different inputs. Um, you know, basically they're gonna have their input prices um, and they're really gonna care about their labor cost, but also what it costs to ship uh, something. And so if we take our total cost for a manufacturing company, it's gonna be a sum of their labor, their intermediate inputs, like the inputs that go right before the final, and then how, how much does it cost to freight it? In a horse cart city where you don't have trucks, your freight cost is gonna get more and more expensive as you move away from the city center. This is what this represents. As we move away from the city center, it's really gonna get more expensive to ship something because you really wanna be right on the city center near whatever the waterway is. Usually a city center is around a waterway. And so my total costs are gonna go up as I move away from the city center, okay? Um, so I'm gonna to wanna, to, if I'm bidding for land, I wanna to wanna to be near the city center, which is why in those horse cart cities, those old cities, you see the um, manufacturing sector being located near the waterway. Now in a truck city though, that's not the case. My freight cost goes a little bit up, but really, you know, it's when I'm in, when I'm in the city center, I'm gonna have to pay more for labor because housing costs more in, that, in, um, in the city center. Um, and so really I'm actually gonna locate further away from the city center. I don't wanna pay those high prices of the city center. I can just, you know, use my trucks to ship things. So my manufacturing sector is gonna move away from the city center as we develop freeways and trucks, which is what we see, okay? And so basically you wanna be kind of where the highways are. If there's a beltway around the city, like a, a highway that goes around the city, that's where you want your manufacturing to be. And that's kind of indeed what we, what we see. If you go to Denver, this is, you can see the manufacturing sector 
is located along these arteries, along these transportation arteries. All right. And that's generally what we see in the present as the manufacturing sector has moved away from the city center to kind of the outskirts or just as long as it's near a freeway, that's, um, that's good enough. Okay. Let's take a break and we'll move to office space, not the movie, but uh, the price of office space in a city center. 